way down. Live. Live? That's what it says. <laughs> what up, y'all? What up, what up, what up? <laughs> Woo! Whole new style of production today. Hang with your boy. Wow, what up, what up, world, what up? What's going on? Hang with me for a second. It's your boy Jay Heights, the great white hype. The greatest entertainer in the world. And welcome to the weekly live video review, okay? Oh. Now thank y'all for joining us. Every Monday around seven o'clock Pacific time, we join y'all on Facebook and we give you guys a breakdown of one of the artists that we like to review on the Billboard charts. And I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. This song I'm doing, Rick Ross, Idols Become Rivals this week. This one was not on the, uh, the Billboard charts. I did not find it, all right? I came across it on YouTube and I was blown away, people. <laughs> Had to do it. Had to do it. Now, this is not just Idols Become Rivals song. The song's a Birdman diss. And I want the whole world to know that we don't give a fuck about Birdman. So fuck you. <laughs> A.K.A. Baby. A.K.A. Stunner. You ain't nothing. I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> anyway, excuse, excuse the distractions. Again, it's a new show, folks. It's a new show. Um, Birdman owes a lot of people a lot of goddamn money. Okay, he owes Lil Wayne money, he owes Bangladesh money, he owes DJ Khaled money, and Lord knows he owes Rick Ross money for this track right here. I don't become your rival. This track, people, has 7.4 million views on YouTube. It was dropped one month ago. It comes from the album that Rick Ross dropped March 17, 2017. It's about some mouthful. The album, Rather You Than Me. Okay? God damn, look at this. Chain is backwards. Microphone's falling. Take a break for a beer. It's been a rough fucking year. Not just for me, for Lil Wayne. And for all the other people that are owed a whole bunch of goddamn money. And this shit ain't funny if you can hear my tummy. I ain't looking bummy. Goddamn, I ain't trying to be no dummy. And I would never sound a bird, man. I can't help but rock that. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you why. Let me tell you also why this isn't. Who's watching this, Travis? Who's on? Who's on, who's, 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 who's viewing us? I can't see nothing on your phone, Kim. No All right, worries. you got Maddie. Maddie's in the house. All right, listen. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. This is a whole new show, and things are working a whole way differently. And uh, golly, appreciate y'all joining us and hanging in with us. All right, so. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! All right. So rather you than me, that's what the album is, man. Idols become rivals, Birdman discs. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. 7.4 motherfucking million views on YouTube. And I can't believe this show today, man. I ain't got the right computer. I ain't got the right uh, camera. I ain't got the right nothing. But I definitely, hopefully, got the right outfit. All right? Now listen. This originally uh, was on the Dynasty album with Jay-Z featuring Beanie Siegel track 16. All right? It was called... Where have you been? The two talked about their absent fathers, never being around them, growing up. And uh, the song was originally made by Camilo Sesto. All right? That's the original uh, uh, sample on, on, on the whole situation. Excuse me, I'm about to burp. Rick Ross thought it was a great song. Wanted to go ahead and take it, use it for himself. For this Birdman diss. This is what he says in it right here. He says, listen, last request. Can all producers please get paid? He's basically stating, man, that Birdman used a whole bunch of people. He went into saying that Lil Wayne taught him the game. And then he dissed Lil Wayne. We've all been waiting for Lil Wayne's next album to drop. You know why it hasn't? Because Birdman's keeping it. Birdman's being a greedy bastard. Birdman owes, owes Bangladesh a milli for the track a milli. You heard me? And Lil Wayne's doing his ass for $50 million. Shit is getting ugly, y'all, and Rick Ross ain't feeling them. We all know DJ Khaled. We're the best. You know what I'm saying? They don't want us to shine. They don't want us to grind. They don't want us to make these great motherfucking shows and great music. But we're going to do it anyway. DJ Khaled's doing a lot of big things right now. I think I've reviewed three of the songs in the last month. 
He owes DJ Khaled money, y'all. DJ Khaled's a great guy. It even says, Rick Ross was like, even like, man, what hurt me the most is how you did my boy DJ Khaled. Because DJ Khaled, man, showed you so much love when you came through. Rick Ross even said this song right here, man, and I quote, I look at this song as basically it's a letter of me writing to someone in the game that I looked up to the most. And I hate what things have come to. You see, idols become your rivals. That's when you look up to someone, right? Your whole life. And then you eventually end up on their level. And then when you do, something bad happens. They owe you some money. They take your woman. They kick you in the dick. I don't know. Something bad happens. They smoke all your weed up. They become your rival. And you no longer look at them the same. You no longer look at them with respect. It's not disrespect. And you don't like them at all. It's crazy how you can look up to someone, then you become your equal, and then you look down at them. It's like a ch -ch -ch kind of thing. Well, that's what happened, man. Rick Ross talks about, in this song, how when I met you, right, it was such an honor. And then it destroyed me when I realized that your watch was fake. Now, I'm not pointing at my watch because it's fake. I'm pointing at my watch because it's on and it's actually real. But who gives a fuck, man? I'm saying if I can afford a real motherfucking watch, why can't Birdman? Birdman, his net worth is an estimated $110 million. Rick Ross goes on to say in the song, how you gonna touch half a billion dollars in your team out here starving? It don't make no sense. It ain't right, man. So, uh, what else to say? Handed songs over. He said I handed, Rick Ross said I handed songs over and never asked for a coin. Rick Ross's current net worth is 35 million for those who are interested in knowing that. Uh, let's see. I think I pretty much covered all this, man. White supported this dude, man, for a long goddamn time. All right. Uh, at the end of the day, a lot of people uh, are not happy with, with, with Birdman. He's been uh, talked a lot of shit about. And uh, he even went up into one of the radio uh, producers and he said, Yo, you're going to talk about my name? Then put some respect on my name. Put some respect on my name when you talk about it. And that was making fun of him. There's been a whole bunch of memes and gifts that uh, refer to that, man. So you got to check that out, man. But I just had to show this, man, because. I used to love this song when I, when I first heard a Jay-Z album, uh, Dynasty, back in the days. One of my favorite songs on the track because of the beat itself, all right? But when I heard it again, remixed by Rick Ross and Dissin' Birdman, it just, oh my God, I had to do it today. I had to absolutely do it today, man. So, as y'all know, um, like I said, this show's crazy today, so we got shit written backwards and, and written the right way and all the other shit. But on this show, it's a three mic rating. It's a doo-doo brown mic, then the song is shitty. If it's an average song, it's a motherfucking silver mic. And if it's a great song, it's a gold mic all the way. And we base that on your lyrics, your topic, your beat, and your feature in it. All right? So let's go ahead and get right on into this. I feel, personally, the lyrics to this song are deep. The lyrics are original. Okay, the lyrics are talking about Birdman fucking over people left and right. And he got hell goddamn money, so why would you do that? So I'm going to give the lyrics two thumbs up. Topic, keep it in 100. If you're talking about money, eh, a little bit. But listen to the title again. Idols become your rivals. That's really what it is. You talked about how he once looked up to a man, then this man became his equal, and now this man is absolutely nothing for what he's done to his people. All right? Two thumbs up for that topic. The beat, I told you that. I absolutely love it. That's what embodies this entire song. Which just captured my attention from the get-go. I love this motherfucking beat, man. So shout out to, uh, one more time, Camilo Sesto. For right, making this amazing motherfucking shit. Give it two thumbs up. Now, a feature, there is none. So, don't even worry about that. It's all Rick Ross and this shit. So, I'm going to be honest with you. I ain't going to give it to Bob Barker Mike. This song is not average. I'm trying to tell you, it ain't about just love and motherfucking and, uh, and money. This is a gold mic song right here. Wait, 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 wait. When the audience starts screaming, that's the only time I can start drinking. You know what I'm saying? That's the only time I get to get out, man. 
So let me let me put my Rick Ross shades on. And yes, sir, these are real Versace's. And luckily for y'all, I ain't looking like Rick Ross. You know what I'm saying? A 35 year old pregnant man. That would be horrendous. So anyways, I appreciate y'all watching. Your boy Jay Heiss on the greatest uh, entertainer in the world on WLVR. It looks like the lick is kicking in because I don't know what the hell I'm saying. If you guys like what we're doing, give us a thumbs up. If you love what we're doing, then give me a heart. If you guys want us to review one of your favorite people next week on our show, then go ahead and let me know down below in the comments. Shout out to your bro and all my people. All right? So we all know life ain't fair, and I ain't got no hair, and truth be told, no one cares. All right? So I love y'all. Thank y'all for watching. And we're going to put on this amazing song and vibe out to this while I turn it off. I thought y'all niggas really owned them cars, he said. But y'all don't. You lease them fucking cars. Bunch of sucker rappers. Keep it 100. I own my BMW. I own this watch. Now, okay, let me keep it real. These two, since we keep keeping it real, this is costume jewelry. Alright? It's sterling silver. It ain't real diamonds. It ain't motherfucking real gold. It's... It's sterling silver, but it still costs probably your whole goddamn paycheck, real talk, just one of them. This shit is real. Okay, I ain't bragging, I'm just keeping it real. This is white gold, this is silver, those are fucking diamonds in it. My smallest one is real, right? This is all fucking silver, and those are just diamonds in it. It is what it is. These are real Versace's. Yeah, it's a real coach belt, and it's a real fucking pair of polo draws. I ain't bragging, but I am sagging. Alright, I'm just keeping it on 100. Because Birdman be bullshit. He be leasing all his shit. But I'm gonna be dropping my whip in my next clip. Anyway, man. So I was out there faking, man, who ain't really stunning, man. Get it together, dog. Be yourself, man. Be yourself. This is who the fuck I am. Whether y'all like it or not, this is who the fuck I am. So, uh, you know what I'm saying? Suck a dick, grab a nip, and I still represent the 916. Peace. Get bagged.